Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Okay, so I have got to take this moment to gloat. I have got to take this moment to brag, okay? Because what I have been predicting all season for Queen Sugar has happened. What I predicted in the last review happened in this episode. It's been happening all season and I haven't been wrong yet. This is why you need to subscribe to my channel because I have the amazing ability of foresight, reviewing and understanding, foreshadowing that's in the writing. I was correct about the season finale of Pose. I was correct about the season finale of The Handmaid's Tale. And I was correct about the infamous series, The Game of Thrones. And almost to a T, how it ended subscribe we're about to get into it all right queen sugar season four episode 11. i'm sorry <laughs> So let's get into it. We start off with the scene with Micah and Kiki. Yeah, she loves him. They are getting ready for prom and they look so beautiful and everybody's taking pictures. And his mom is like, ooh, stand like this, ooh, do like this. And he's like, Mom, you ain't even holding the camera right. Let's just do this. Let's just go. They're talking about how they got a room with some friends and they got all these plans about prom. And people are giving their little side notes about what to expect from prom and to be responsible and to be careful and then Hollywood with his Batman voice says hey oh, man I just need you to be responsible and Michael looks at him like I, I got this <laughs> so anywho they get ready they go out the door they take a final look over the shoulder and give a little pose you know for Charlie and they go about their way Ooh, and I also can't forget to mention that Micah has gotten into Harvard and Kiki has gotten a full scholarship pertaining to visual arts. So I can't leave that out. So we cut to the next scene and Charlie, she's going over her notes for the debate. She's getting ready. She's getting all of her facts and all of the things that she has in line if she were to win the race. And as she's saying them, she's like, well, this is a, these are the things that I believe for the city council. And I was like, uh -uh, don't say that. Okay. Uh, well, these are the, these, this is what I want to do for the city. She's like, uh, uh look this way. Don't forget about the people over here. You looking over here, but don't forget about the people over here. She's like, okay. So one of the things that I want to do for city council, and I'm like, no, we're like, uh, uh, that, 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 that. That ain't gonna work. And Charlie just looking at her like, why don't you just put an earpiece in my ear and just tell me everything? Cause I'm, I mean, I'm looking at my notes and I don't understand. But Nova's telling her, look, you're gonna have comments and questions popping out of the audience, people to get you off track and to dissuade you. Someone's gonna try to get you to respond out of emotion, bringing up your past, which is true, or somebody may want to confuse you from maybe what is factual and mixing in your past and how does that affect your morals and if this is your morals is this how you is this how you're gonna lead etc so all this stuff she's reminding her of and she says look if you are gonna get out there believe me the Landry's are gonna do something to dig deep into your past and they're gonna bring it up and she's like you're gonna need some ammunition and she hands her a book and it's the same book that the distant cousin gives to Nova. Foreshadowing. This is foreshadowing. So she says the word ammunition. And I know y'all are y'all are like, okay, you looking too deep into this. But look, you have to go into the writing. And this is how I predict a lot of stuff. She says, here is some ammunition that you can use. Now keep in mind generally in writing when they say ammunition, ammunition is highly likely to backfire it seems like a wonderful idea and something that you can have and use but playing dirty always gets your hands dirty you always get dirty dealing with dirt so as the viewer you know we're thinking yay this is something she can use you know to, to finally use on the Landry's yeah let's go for it don't get too crunk yet because I have a feeling that this will unfortunately backfire but we'll get into that a little later we cut to the next scene where ralph 
Angel and his new boo, I think her name is Disha, but you know, she's the lawyer boo, and their kids are there, they're having a play date and all this other stuff, and they go over to the side and they have like their uh, little adult conversation, and Ralph Angel is just like, look, I know I've been, you know, not answering your calls, and you know, I missed out on our last date and everything, and you know, Disha's just like, okay, cool, but I just want to know, are you okay? I mean, you haven't been calling me back or whatever like that. He finally admits, admits, which I called on the last video, that he hasn't been honest with her. Unfortunately, Darla relapsed and he felt like, you know, if she bleed, I bleed. If she hurts, I hurt. I gotta be there. That is love, okay? When It's different to care for someone, but if they're constantly on your mind about their well-being and you just want to come to their rescue and help them, okay, that's love, okay? That's my obligation, that's love. So he tells her that and he finally admits that he's still in love with Darla. And Disha, you know, she's just like, basically, thank you for being honest. You know, she sound like me, like, just be honest, like, life is short you know don't 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 drag me along and you still got feelings over here like just tell me the truth i can take the truth i'm grown okay but she tells him look she's really concerned for darla is she okay is blue okay and she says that's a beautiful thing for a man to admit that he's still in love with somebody and maybe not actively pursuing this person but admitting that he has love for her he, she's like okay good great it's unfortunate that it's not with me you know <laughs> could be fine you know it's unfortunate that it's not with me but at the same time she's thinking about don't be with me out of obligation don't feel like you owe me anything like if that's where you want to be that's where you need to be and she walks off and Ralph Angel feels bad about saying that, but he was honest, and that was great. Micah and his friends, you know, they're at the hotel, you know, they're talking, they're looking at each other's outfits, and they're like, oh, that looks good, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, they're talking, they're so excited and all this good stuff. And one of the friends says, okay, so Makai, or whatever his name, Micah, you know, they had a mix-up, but it looks like not only the room are we sharing you know we got that room but there's another room that has your name on it like why is this why is it this extra room and kiki has this look of embarrassment as if dang you know now they know maybe it was possible we were gonna go to our own room and you know do something so she it looks like she's embarrassed that they're aware that maybe they would have went off to the side and had their own room you no know, their own room but i'm like kiki you initiated this so what you eh. but anyway so they're talking about that they're on on their way to go to prom and all of a sudden they can hear the rain they look out the window and it's a storm and they're like dang like it's really raining hard and all of a sudden the power goes out and we can tell from there that whoa they may have something in their way charlie you know she's still in Vi's restaurant going over what she's gonna you know say in the race and we have jacob board along you know he comes in there and she's like look what are you doing here i don't want to talk to you i'm trying to practice over what i'm gonna say and he basically tells her look why are you doing all of that practicing i just want to let you know that this race is pretty much in the bag like my mother has guaranteed that i'm gonna win this race you know you might as well stop rehearsing it's already signed sealed and delivered and charlie's just like you know the nerve of you you know the white privilege and your arrogance and everything like that it's just really just baffles me that you even come in here with that and he's telling her like i'm not trying to be an a-hole i'm just telling you the truth it's not about what you're doing or your smarts or who you know it's who i know and it's all about power and i want you to understand that we see Hollywood and Vi, they're coming in the house. You can tell it's been raining. They're bringing in packages that was at the doorstep. They got rain on them. You know, they're wiping away the rain. They got caught in the rain and stuff. They coming in the house and he looks in the boxes and they are parts or different things for his bike. And Vi's just like, you know, you got all these parts for the bike, but I'm letting you know I'm not getting on that bike. And he's like, well, I got a helmet for you. And she's just like, I hope you got the receipt because I'm not getting on that on that bike. And he's just like, Vi, you know, you are no fun. And she's just like, no fun. Uh, 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 Alexa, <laughs> uh, play my mix, you know. And the song come on, real ass me to give a fuck about the nigga. No, I was playing. It plays this song, and she gives her little two step and starts to take things off in Hollywood. It's like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, 
all right. So she wanna let she wants to let him know that I can do a little shum shum. Micah and his friends they learned that the rain has created so much flooding that the venue has flooding where they were supposed to have prom and they have completely canned it. They have canceled prom. So they're bummed out about that. We then cut to Nova and Calvin. You know, they've made plans to see each other. You know, he comes in, they kiss, they're celebrating her belated birthday, and they come in and they're chit chatting and they're catching up. You know, when they used to, you know, fornicate and cheat and he used to cheat on his wife. They would just like, remember that? All the times when your wife was wondering where you were and, you know, you was over here. <laughs> You know, so they do that and they start talking about, well, it's flooding. So what else are we going to do? And no, it's just like, you know, I'm going to, you know, cook. And, you know, Calvin says, no, you know, I'm, I'm going to cook. And no, we're like, okay. So he starts to go in the kitchen and they're cooking and they're talking. And one of the things that they talk about and they discuss, he says, you know, wow, I'm really liking this. You know, I'm really liking, he's looking at her making the salad and he's pulling out the chicken and the vegetables that are in the stove and he's pulling it out. And he's like, I really like this. And this scene really reflected a lot within a few minutes. He recognizes that he likes the domesticated version of their relationship because in the past, they were just sneaking and getting with each other and returning to their regular lives. So he says, you know what, how about we do this next weekend? And she's like, well, no, I got something going on with a magazine, an interview, whatever. And she's like, well, how about the following weekend? He says, well, that's when I'm going to have my kids. So then she says, well, then the next weekend, you know, I'm going to be gone. And then that next weekend is going to come up and then you'll be with your kids. Kind of this we're in this fantasy of enjoying each other, but that quickly popped to reality and he still has to deal with he's still a father like he still has his reality she still has her reality and what they were getting before were just bits and pieces of each other nova expressed that you know when i was with you you know basically saying i had you for a little taste and i could control that and he says well you know you were afraid for afraid of commitment i think that's what that was and she's like no you know when in actuality weren't afraid of commitment Nova but you were enjoying your freedom in not having commitment enjoying the fact that you didn't have any responsibility of a relationship and you could take bits and pieces of people because we had Calvin and then we had the little girlfriend so there were several other sexual relationships that she had with people and she didn't want to connect with anybody once again, showing, showing that she had a selfish side and not considering people's families, that they were giving so much into her, but she wasn't giving it back. So it kind of, she had another moment where she was able to reflect like, dang, like, I kind of be using people. <laughs> but Calvin and her, they realized that life is real. He is divorced, but he's still a father foreshadowing we have charlie and jacob they're still in Bob's restaurant and they're talking and the rain pretty much has them confined to that restaurant because it's raining so bad i mean they're they i mean it's nowhere they can go so they're kind of forced to talk to each other she tells him that wow like how can you not see just your white privilege like out of everything you know how can you not recognize that because she plays him the audio of his mother basically when she was going off on Charlie saying she's not this she's not that and gal and using all these racial slurs and telling her that she's in a world that basically doesn't belong to her and that she could never understand and she should stay in her place and all of those comments so him hearing that he still had this energy of denial and she says well how can you not understand it's like i'm so confused like it's out of all i'll give you evidence and just this stuff time and time again and you still just walking around here like nothing's wrong he's like look i can't drop out of the race because basically i got a lot of people that are supporting me a lot of money that has gone into what i'm doing and i can't just drop out but i mean what do you expect for me to do he was like i can't drop out of the race but i can be unlikable maybe i could say some things that wouldn't you know rub people the right way 
And Charlie's like, nah, you got to do more than that. You got to do more than that. And he's just like, okay, well, what am I going to do? And she hands him the same book that the distant cousin gave to Nova. Like I have said in the other videos, I still do not trust that distant cousin at all. I don't trust what's in the book. I don't feel right about the fact that it was hidden. And out of all people, why would she be the cousin to have it? That ammunition that they're passing back and forth, uh, don't feel good about that. So well, then we cut to the scene of Vi scrubbing Hollywood's big ass back in the tub. I mean, they could have left that out. She just really just, she really, you know, dun -dun, dun -dun, rolling, rolling, rolling on the wheel. I mean, she's really like, shh, shh, shh. I mean, she's rubbing his back. He like, oh yeah, I see why y'all ladies like this spa treatment. She like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, uh. But anyway, finally Vi is showing her man some attention, which I said in the last video is really not giving their relationship the nudge that it needs because I've said before, Vi has not supported her husband in the way that she should. It's been the other way around. Hollywood has gone above and beyond. I know that's being a good husband, but he has always put his dreams on the back burner for Vi. And Vi for a very long time, did not acknowledge how much he was giving up, how much money he was giving up, time, and putting his dreams on the back burner. But look at the other, other reviews just to see more into detail what I've been saying. And finally, we see her give her man some support and love and time because she's been very cold. And even though she's had trauma with her experiences, she's been very cold to Hollywood and he's done nothing but be there for her so while he's getting his back back scrubbed you know he tells her you know hey i'm still oh, let me get the voice let me get the hollywood voice batman gotta think batman christian bell you know i uh, i'm thinking about my man's group and i'm really getting that together and he tells her what that is and for the first time in a long time by says that's a good idea because you know she's sweating because you know she be really rubbing them hard she's like that's a really good idea you know so they continue to have a little couple spa moment in the restroom ralph angel is at darla's house he's brought her some soup he's there to comfort her and darla is very you know thankful that he's there and that he cares cares for her as she's trying to recuperate after her relapse and she's conflicted and confused because she's like you know, I get it that we share a child together, you know, we made a child together and that we have to communicate for the sake of Blue, but she's like, why are you always coming around? Kind of this thing like, why are you acting like my man, you know? And Ralph Angel, which surpri surprised me, he was very honest with Disha and telling her that, hey, I'm still in love with Darla. But when Darla asked him this question, he didn't really, he wasn't honest. He said, that hey you know we have a child together i want to make sure you're okay and even when we were together you know kind of insinuating throwing it out there even when we were together i would think about just silly stuff like you know when you were on your way to class were you okay you know did she have breakfast this morning and you know silly stuff like that and she's like no it's not silly it's sweet that is sweet though <laughs> you know but she's just like oh that's really sweet and he says well you know yeah, that's how I felt. And she kind of does this little tuck and roll into his arms, and he holds her. And as he's holding her, he's really in awe and goo-goo over her. And then all of a sudden, he has this look of anger and sadness and kind of slowly pulls away from her. So clearly with the acting and body language, he's still hurt. And he doesn't want to admit that he wants to have a relationship with her in this moment at that exact moment because he's hurt and he's angry he doesn't know the aftermath of the honesty in telling her that hey i'm gonna give our relationship another try but darla she says you know with everything which i predicted with everything you know have have you ever thought about us giving each other another try and you know he says yeah you know i thought about it it would be great and uh, you know, I want to give us another try, and I've always thought thought about it. And you could tell he, he's pulling and tugging at the thought of it. 
he really just doesn't go in with the full honesty like we thought he he would because he was 100 honest with disha so there's so much more more than that i do think like i predicted in the last video and all the other ones that their relationship will eventually get back together but he's just hurt you can't blame them they're both hurt and eventually i think that will work itself out that they will end up being together ralph angel also reminds her look i know you're recuperating i know you're getting your stuff together but don't take too much time out in not seeing blue and she tells him look i understand that but i'm still trying to get myself together and i don't want him to see me in a certain state and once again he has that look of anger of wow i have to wait on her again and i have to let her take her time while i just take on the full burden that fear of being hurt and that look of wow did i make a mistake in telling disha how i felt about darla so he has that look of like like here we go again i'm dealing with this crap and if we get together this is what i'll probably continuously have to deal with so he's between that rock and that hard place again but then again he realizes i can't have my cake and eat it too like i have to make a decision who i want to be with and after he's told disha that i have a feeling she's not gonna have it she's not gonna play that back and forth well it's not working with darla so let's give it another world she don't seem like that type of character so we'll see so this next scene was really deep you have micah and his friends, you know, they're trapped in the hotel room because it's, you know, storming and flash flooding. So they can't go anywhere. They can't leave. And, you know, they're sitting in a nice circle and they're like, wow, you know, why don't we go around and everybody talk about where they'll be in 10 years. And each kid starts to go around and talk about what they want to do. And one person says, hey, you know, I want to have clinics, you know, uh, that are around different cities to help people, you know, with insurance. One person says he wants to be a lawyer and work on uh, bail bonds for people that are just sitting in jail because they can't afford, you know, this. And one girl is saying, hey, I want to have, you know, Kiki, she's saying I want to have museums with art and displays and all this other stuff. And then it gets to Micah, who's been accepted into Harvard, remember that. And he's kind of dumbfounded. He's like, well, you know, I'm do my stuff with the cinematography, but, you know, I'm guessing that will evolve, evolve into something. And there is an awkward silence in the room. This scene said a lot. Even though Micah has had all of these doors open for him in developing a future, that he doesn't really know what he wants to do or where he wants to go. He is a whirling dervis. He has no idea what he wants to do with his life. Everybody else can see where they want to be, but him. He's lived at the best house, been in the best city, been at the best schools. This is why I say the scene is very deep. With millennials, with these generations that are behind us, is college for everybody they might not have been with the writers intended but this is this was my point of view is college the default to a lot of people that don't know what the, they want to do with their lives now don't get me wrong education is very important but a lot of people forget that there's different ways of learning and developing your craft and learning who you are um so even though you've gotten into Harvard, who are you? He still doesn't know who he is, where his true talents lie, and if he has an idea for a career or development, is he shy or hesitant to share what that is? He's conflicted with tra different traumas that he's dealt with. He's had culture shock with his own people, which is a lot. And from someone who has gone to PWIs my whole life, predominantly white schools. When I graduated and I went to other colleges that my cousins went to and their graduations at HBCUs, I felt like I was cheated. I felt like I missed out on so much as an individual with my, just my own people. And, you know, 
that's just a totally different video. I, I, I'll have to make a, a totally different video about the misconceptions about HBCUs because I had counselors now that I'm older, I realize like, wow, that was really racist. Things that they would tell me about HBCUs. You don't want to go there. You have a 4.2. You have a cumulative of a 4.1. Uh, you know, that's a totally different video. I have to do a totally different video about that. But anyway, that scene was very deep. Because are we pressuring young kids? You have to go to college. You have to do this. This is the, this is the formality and the timeline of your life. But that scene in his confusion was just like, wow, you're getting into Harvard. Okay, you're going to Harvard to do blank. To do what? And Micah has that moment of, is he embarrassed? Is he even more confused now? Kiki had a look of, dang, he don't know what he want to do. <laughs> and his friends was just like, wow. It was that moment of silence and confusion and that the friends were just kind of shocked that he didn't know what he wanted to do. Very, very deep. And it's interesting to know, will Micah's character collapse because he's unsure of himself? So we come to the crescendo and the ending of the episode. Charlie is on the phone and as she's on the phone, she's on the phone with Nova and they're looking at a live feed of Jacob at a pulpit saying details that he's just learned. And Charlie's just like, okay, just look at this. So once again, to remind you, they've had an agreement. You know, Jake, Jacob told Charlie, you know, I can't you know, drop out of the race, you know, but I can be unlikable. She hands him the ammunition to use to help with this this race, right? So as he's speaking, he says, you know, it's, it's come to my attention that the pricing policies with Landry, Landry Enterprise uh, blatantly discriminates against people of color. Basically, the, pri the pricing is making it more attractive to white people and not black people. There is a definite difference of the pricing for white people and the pricing for black people. And he says, this is something that I can't uh, continue with. This is new information that I've learned and I can't keep going with this. And you know, in that, you know, since I have that information, I can't move forward uh, because I feel like I'm not helping the people. And also, um, I've come to the understanding and upon new information that my great grandmother was African American. Therefore, with my new learned ethnicity, I need to do more research about who I am. You know, this is a great grandmother that was hidden from the Landry family. And now that I know this, this exists, and you know, Nova, she's just like, Okay, uh, you know, I don't think people such as the Landry's will take, you know, losing very well. And, you know, Charlie, you know, she says that, you know, I, I don't either. And, you know, she explains that what this will do is this will have the racist drop out, you know, with the, the vote for him. And also the black people that supported him because they're going to say, well, you saying you have this newfound family genealogy maybe you just saying that to get my vote i'm out so she's saying that could help with the the, vo the vote decreasing and then adding to my ballot and she looks very confident she's looking at the screen and she's like yes you know so that's basically the episode so once again my predictions i don't feel right <laughs> about that distant cousin that just came out of nowhere with the book. I mean, I could be 100% wrong, and this is just the secret that's been held uh, since forever, and I just don't believe the distant cousin story when she says that her dad didn't support her holistic beliefs and journey and how she wanted to be a healer, and he banished her from the family. From this episode, clearly that's a lie. 
clearly there's more much much more to be discovered many many more secrets that this distant cousin isn't saying if it's the truth it's the partial truth and i don't believe this distant cousin and out of all the family members why does that distant cousin hold something with such critical information why is she the only person who has it if this is something that older family members know why haven't they said anything when they've clutched power in their hands about the Landry's I don't feel right about that in writing foreshadowing once again ammunition that will backfire unfortunately now let's just say hypothetically okay in the future because we only have what two episodes left something like that let's just say Charlie wins the race right let's just say she uses this ammo you know in the debate and Jacob you know he's supporting Charlie and she wins that ammo that was used expressing who his great-grandmother was or great-great-grandmother will backfire it will backfire because for one the information was retrieved so easy and once again in the last review remember Vi called a favor okay to the dad about hey back off of my family you owe me a favor Vi has a favor from the Landry's and I want to know how she got that favor. Was there a love connection? Was there a relationship with Vi and this guy? Were there several relationships? How is it that you have that genealogy and it's never been, it is something missing. And of course, we'll find that out the last episode of the season, probably. But I don't trust the distant cousin. I don't trust Jacob. Clearly, there's information that he knows. But once again, I'm predicting that book with that information will backfire uh, because they've used the keyword ammunition specifically in writing. And I think that that will have some tremendous effect. And I don't think the relationship with Vi and Hollywood will continue to get better. I just don't think. I still think that, you know, uh, even though things seem to be all good with them, you know, they had their spa moment and he has his motorcycle and things like that. Vi is still in her funk of not really going in all in for Hollywood. You know, uh, not you know, not saying that they didn't have a good moment in this episode because they did. Uh, it just doesn't look too too peachy king. Doesn't look too peachy king, and it doesn't look too peachy king for Kiki and Micah. Uh, you know, they may be growing apart. Is it possible that Kiki can surpass Micah even with all his education and even with all of his perks that he's had his whole life? The, the perceptions of, man, they sure have this and they sure have that. Man, I would sure love to have that in my life. Maybe schooling would be better. Maybe this, maybe that. But it just goes to prove that when you stay true to yourself and you know yourself and you know your dreams and you stay consistent with following your dreams then it's more likely to happen. Micah looked very embarrassed that he did he wasn't sure of himself and he didn't know what he wanted to do. And that is dangerous to the character. Not critical, but it's dangerous to the character in confusion because that could lead to sadness and that can lead to depression for somebody that's just so set up for success. You're so set up for success and you don't even know what you want to do. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you think think i've been right man this whole season and i just hope for the best for darla and ralph angel but ralph angel looked very conflicted when he poured out how he felt with disha but when it came to expressing that with darla he held back why did he do that also the book of ammunition received from the cousin and Calvin expressing that he wants to move to her city 
and make it official and always be around her. So they have this, this fantasy of just making it so great. I don't think Nova will really fall into the domesticated life. She's still a free spirit. And if she's a free spirit, is Calvin the one to bring her down to reality per se? Because he still has those kids. You ready to be a stepmother, Nova? I don't think so. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Comment, share, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Wonder what's gonna happen next week. Oh, I know everything I just said. <laughs> okay, bye.